Best Before Yesterday Software released Maniac version 2.1 as shareware in 1994 for Macintosh OS 7.5. It offers a new take on the Pac-Man arcade game by combining Pac-Man with Hangman. The game plays almost like Pac-Man. You control the character Pac around collecting dots and other scorable things, in a maze that changes every time you go to another level. All the while, your main goal is to try and get the rainbow flashing token that is traveling around the level. Once you touch the token, the game will pause and you will have a chance at solving the level's word. There are 300 words available using the A, E, I, L, M, N, O, P, R, S, T, N, U keys. If you guess a letter correctly, you get to choose another letter and so on until you mess up. If you mess up, the game unpauses and the token will appear randomly on the map. You will have to keep collecting this token until you can guess correctly what the word is. Once you do, you can move on to the next level. As you get farther into the game, the harder it is to get the token, as it will go faster and try to dodge you as much as possible. While everything is happening, you are racing against the clock even during the guessing period. The clock is a bar on the right side of the screen that will go down as time progresses. The game has, as a Pac-Man clone must, enemies, and these enemies have their own names and personalities. Lore is pink, slow, and stupid. Trig is green and is only slightly smarter and faster. Trog is blue, better, and what the game calls the famous brother of Trig. And Karn is red and Pac's worst enemy. He's faster and he'll follow Pac if he gets close until you lose him or you die. To aid your progress through the levels, there are two power pellets that are used just as they would in any regular Pac-Man game. These allow you to eat the now defenseless ghosts for a limited time. Once eaten, the ghosts will be dazed for a fixed time and then come back to hunt you. There are also power-ups called bonuses that are on the left side of the screen. They will have an arrow next to one of them indicating which one you would use if you hit the bonus key. The arrow will start at the bottom and move toward the top as you collect dots. Choosing the right bonus at the right time is a key element of the game, and bonuses can be saved for future levels, meaning wherever the arrow is pointing at the end of a level, that is where it will be on the next. You also have three lives that will be used if an enemy gets you or if time for the level runs out. If the time runs out, the level will restart with a new word. Also, after every two levels, there is a bonus round, where the ghosts are turned blue and move very quickly. The goal is to collect all the ghosts within a small time limit and get more points from collecting dots. At the end of a level, there is a bonus score that is totaled up using the bonus from collecting dots and how much time was left as a bonus score. Everything collected on the level along with the bonus will total up for your score, which, when you die and if high enough, will be placed on the high scoreboard that records the top five best scores. There is a problem to note that occurred in my Basilisk emulation that doesn't happen when running the game on the regular OS. When playing the game a second time in the same session, the game is faster than it once was, and because of it, it is much harder to control. The best solution is to quit and start again. The graphics for the game are modeled in a Pac-Man style, with solid colors used to make a clean, non-retro look. The screen is in a 640x480 resolution, and will black out the desktop to allow for focus on the game no matter what your screen resolution. The game has 8 different tracks that play randomly with the start of new levels. The title of the track will be seen at the bottom right side of the screen. Some of these tracks fit wonderfully, while the Moonshine track doesn't. Also to note, the closer the clock is to running out, the faster the beat of the music is. The game's satisfying and lengthy music comes from the use of mod music files, which makes music that has some length take only a small amount of disk space. There is even an option to drop your own favorite music in the game, as long as it is in the following formats. Mod, Med, Octomed, and Ocalizer. If you are using music files bigger than 100 kilobytes, then you might want to raise the memory for the game as the guide suggests. The sound effects are used for adding cheesiness to the game, often using sound clips from other material, such as Roadrunners and the phrase... There are options to turn the sound on and off, as well as dot sound, which is the sound of you eating dots. There's also options to turn the music on and off, and to choose between high volume or high quality. And the final options for the sound are between using surround stereo, stereo, and mono. There are several requirements that need to be filled before playing this game. A 68,020 Mac or better, 
a system 7.0 to 9, a 640x480 screen or larger, a screen capable of 256 colors or grays or more, and 2,500 kilobytes of free memory. And what is highly recommended by the developer is Sound Manager 3.0, a 68,030 Mac or better, and external speakers. Maniac version 2.1 is available for download on Macintosh Garden and various other sites. This game is a surprising Pac-Man clone that takes the formula to a new level, allowing for a refreshing new gameplay that so far has become a fun distraction. If you like what you see, I suggest you try this game. The Mac game shown was emulated using Basilisk for Windows. Click the links provided if you are interested in the game shown or using a pre-OS X emulator for Mac or PC, and feel free to message me if you have any questions. If you want to see any of my previous work or my last review, click the links provided.